Welcome all the elected officials that are here uh, to my council colleagues. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you dearly for what you do. And just uh, welcome all the elected officials that are here uh, to my council colleagues. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you dearly for what you do as individuals and for our community. Uh, and, uh, and a tremendously important uh, uh, group that uh, provides leadership. To all the special guests that are here, uh, to my regional colleagues, to the chamber, ladies and gentlemen, very proud to always do this, and uh, I'm going to provide some thanks uh, to begin with. First of all, I want to thank the Chamber Board and all the members for providing this opportunity as well as the leadership for the, uh, for the business community. Thank you to the Chamber staff who do so much good for uh, putting on events such as this and many others. To the seniors who continue to build this community, I thank, and to the youth who are stepping up in droves to continue to provide leadership. To your council, thank you. To the regional leaders, I thank you. To the province, I thank you for the partnership. A uh, couple MLAs here, we do thank you for the partnership in many, many categories. I'll mention a couple a bit later. To the federal government, who uh, for so many years it always was a sense of instability, and I sense this level of stability with the federal government. To our city staff, our city manager, Patrick Draper, many of your senior managers and other staff members are here. Patrick, I'm not sure where you are, but thank you to you and the staff for continual leadership for a great city. To the school system, ranked as one of the best in the country, I thank the, the leaders of the school system that are here. The service clubs, the church leaders, and the volunteers who provide the social fabric for our community, to the business community. Thank you to our uniformed people who provide the safety, the peace, and the order, and the freedoms. Our inspector, Kevin Murray, but also in many ways we have, we have that being supported through ambulance and fire, municipal enforcement, and the military who, bring, who keep us freedom keep us free. Our vision statement, St. Albert is a botanical art city, an inclusive family-oriented community that values its natural, cultural, historical, and recreational amenities. Our community secures the safety and well-being of its people through controlled growth, innovation, and dynamic leadership. Not sure about that dynamic leadership thing, but that was in the vision statement. When now that's a little bit of motherhood and apple pie, but I, I, I would like to just comment on uh, how the residents feel about the city meeting its mission, its mandate. The last survey that was done, a community survey was done, showed a 99% satisfaction, the highest in the measured history of the city, and it's up from 98% the last time we did it. So, you look at that and you say that the, the, the residents of our community feel like they're getting good value for their money, and while the 99% suggests perhaps we have 1% to go, uh, it's also a, certainly a good measure of, of success. Now I'm going to speak for about 20 minutes and then I'll take some questions. I'm going to cover four things. I'm going to talk about community safety. I'm going to talk about economic development. I want to talk about a list of council priorities. And I'm going to close it by talking about regional stuff. It's one of the reasons why there's so many regional folks that are here, is because of the connection of each other to the region and that growing connection. And I'm going to close with that. So first, community safety. There has been a very aggressive amount of work by many people in the last several years on community safety. And I'll cover why in a minute. But it's everything about making sure our inspectors are visible, hiring more RCMP case, more RCMP. We've had some highly visible cases going back to four or five years ago where we had a murder. We had sculptures tipped over. We've, been, we've had this aggressive campaign on graffiti removal. There's been some high profile school vandalism. We've added red light cameras. We've increased our photo radar. We've, put our, we've asked our police to be seen more on, trail, on the trails on bicycles and, in, and on, a, on, a, uh, on a cart. Uh, we've been very aggressive with, in schools. Uh, we've had drug dog presence. And our survey is showing that we are at an all-time low as far as community, a sense of security and sense of safety. And in reality, all that extra attention has actually accomplished two things. It's driven fear into the community in some ways, but it's also caused us to dig deeper on some of our community safety. So the community satisfaction is at the price of extra activity. 
but I'd like to talk about what really happened. Photo radar tickets, I'm going to talk about traffic first. Photo radar tickets have plummeted. Plummeted is the word. 50% reduction in speeders in five years. We've increased our photo radar and speeding has declined. It got what we wanted. Traffic fatality rate is 50% of cities our size. Grand Prairie, Sherwood Park, Medicine Hat, Lethbridge, Fort Murray, Red Deer, and you compare traffic fatality rate, we're at 50% of those cities. Now, policing is only a part of, of certainly traffic safety, street design and snow removal and engineering and all those things, all those things matter as well. But that was traffic. In, in other than traffic, there's been a 30% reduction in the last five years in criminal code activity. Drug activity is 50% of what it, what it is in other municipalities our size. 50% is still too much. So while the survey says I'm not feeling safe, we're going, to con we're going to be even more aggressive. We have a very safe community, but we're going to continue to stay aggressive. We're going to be aggressive in traffic safety, drinking, driving, distracted driving, speeders. We're going to continue to engage in schools. Our RCMP in the last a number of years have been in the schools 500 times, 500 times per year going into schools, helping with, help, helping with matters of importance in schools. Youth asset development, neighborhood stuff, street by street, block party by block party. Youth festivals, youth program, youth academy, support for our youth center and a police presence. And Kevin Murray, our, our inspector, is also putting in place a, um, a crime strategy to target uh, the 10 percent of the creeps that do 90 percent of the work. So we're going to continue to be very, very aggressive. And the police, the police can only do so much. This requires a community. So I've delivered a little very sober message about community safety. We have a very safe community, but we're going to continue to be aggressive in community safety. Secondly, economic development. I need to set the stage for economic development for a moment and just talk about our community first. St. Albert continues to be recognized as a top place to raise a family, a great place in Canada to live. All the rankings show us in good, you know, one of the safest cities and all the good metrics that once in a while you get ranked in. Best quality of life rankings and best school system in Canada rankings. And corporately, we've never been better. We have a great balance sheet. Just finished yesterday, our year end, our year end is showing a surplus again of about $600,000. That is, tr on a $100 million budget, when you can be within $600,000, you're doing pretty darn good if you're to manage, your, manage the money, and that credit goes to our staff. We have little debt compared to the rest of Alberta. The real estate network ranks St. Albert as a top place to invest. We're a top place to do business in Alberta ranking. We're seeing annual growth in business licenses of about 3%. 5% increase over the last number of years in industrial square footage and a modest increase in commercial square footage is increasing. So why do I, I'm setting the stage to say these things. We have a good quality of life, we have a solid business climate, and corporately we're in great shape. So now what we need to do from an economic development point of view is diversify our tax base. I'll talk about that for a moment. Last year, put together a 20-point economic development plan we're going to go through a little more detail. Those of you who are interested, on February 26th, we're going to spend uh, a business breakfast here. We're going to spend a little more time on the, on the uh, economic development uh, matters. But I'm just going to hit some of the highlights of that right now. So the 20-point development plan, 20-point economic development plan included such things as improving the appearance and the functionality of St. Albert Trail. Uh, it's, it's not as conducive or attractive to doing business that it, that, that it needs to be. We will continue with our downtown area redevelopment work. We have a new economic development division that's been created and you know, re restructured. We're going to turn them loose. And the key priority for them is to make sure that we bring together the landowners and the developers and to make something happen in terms of, of a faster growth. And some other specifics. Right around here, where we're at the Enjoy Center, there's 150 acres. 150 acres of undeveloped land ready. Campbell Park, which is to the east side of St. Albert, there are about 50 acres there. And we just established about three weeks ago a new light industrial park, employment land park, just basically kitty corner from here, 617 acres just on the other side of, uh, on the, other side of, the, uh, of the river. We're opening up Ray Gibbon Drive. So currently we have about, with all of that land that's available, we have about 1,200 acres, or 500 hectares. 
and the trail, St. Albert Trail North, is going to continue to add some more to that. So we've basically doubled the amount of available land in the last month. Building permits are not quite back up to the boom year, but almost. It's a 20% increase over 2011. So our economic differentiators for this community, for this city, are about five items. And I, I look at, we have a differentiator, and I talked about the, the community. The community is a differentiator. So the community itself, because people want to be in a good, do all the Googling you want, read all the research you want. Business and, and, and employers and want to be in communities where they feel safe and all the good things are happening. That's number one. That's a differentiator for us compared to the rest of, of Canada in many ways. Access to transportation routes. With the opening of Ray Gibbon Drive, those of you might not be familiar, you, you, you probably came down it to get here. Opening of Ray Gibbon Drive, as well as Anthony Hendy, is a, is a dif differentiator for us because we're close to the transportation routes. Third, our brand, the community brand, is a differentiator for us. Good, solid community with, with, a, with, a, with an ability, because we're branded the way we are, to attract business. We have available employment lands, and we have a chamber and an economic, we have a chamber and an economic community, or chamber and a community that want economic development. So those are the differentiators, I believe, that we have. The community, access to transportation, our brand, available employment lands, and people who want, uh, to, want, who want to diversify our, our tax base. And from an economic development point of view, I'd like to share this. I looked at all the cities across the province, including Edmonton, Calgary, Wood Buffalo, Sherd Park, I clumped them all together to try to look at the, at the mill rates of non-residential. And in the last three years, across the province, the mill rates of non-residential has increased by 6%. In St. Albert, it's gone down by 1%. Our council and staff have worked to send the message many, many times that we're serious about every aspect of economic development, the tax structure, the existing taxpayer, as well as the future taxpayer. So that was my first two areas. Again, I spoke about community safety and economic development, and I'd like to talk now about a list of key priorities for 2013, and then I'll close it off with talking about the region. In 2013, we have a lot of work ahead of us. The last three or four years, we've tried to maintain a modest tax increase of about 3%. Uh, I don't see that changing much, to be frank. Uh, there, there's, we have no indication that, that you can freeze taxes and no indication that you can, uh, that you cannot have, that we likely will have to raise them in some modest way. Also, our city is going to have to support additional regional matters in a more, in a greater way. I'll talk more detail about that, but I'll just give you some, some examples. The region is growing at the rate of 25,000 per year. The region is growing at the rate of 25,000 people per year. We have no choice as a community to figure out how to be part of that. And I'm going to talk again, I'll, I'll spend some more time on that. But, but for examples, there are, our, our staff and our councils are going to have to be involved in regional affordable housing, geographic information systems, public transit governance, regional land planning. There's a rewrite of what's called the growth plan. The growth plan is a document put together to look at the region in the next 35 years. There's a rewrite of that. A lot of work is going to have to be put uh, is going to have to be taken, uh, our staff are going to put a lot of work lot with that as well as our, certainly our elected officials. Tough work by city staff, the people who have worked at regional staff, councillors Broadhead, Heron, Bracco, Lemieux and Parker have done a tremendous amount of work and that isn't going to go away. 2013 is going to also see a very aggressive engineering and public works program. Whether it's the tree program or our aggressive sewer backup program, road rebuilds or sidewalks and bus stops. It's kind of that basic bread and butter stuff. We are going to continue to make sure the bread and butter stuff is taken care of on an ongoing basis. It's also fairly aggressive. We're not backing off on all that work from an economic development point of view, from a chamber point of view. You need to know that you're going to continue to see uh, that, that kind of work that we've done in the last three or four years will continue on in 2013. We need to be putting in place some water wastewater and storm sewer long-term plans. We need the county at the table to help us develop those long-term plans. The county needs to be at the table, the city needs to be at the table. Fundamentally important that water, sewer and stormwater are planned together. In 2013 we will finish the Rio Park upgrade. 
the real and, and that'll open reopen for soccer, rugby, and cricket in 2014. We're going to re, we're going to open up the northernmost part of Ray Gibbon Drive, so that'll take care of the west. The west will become open. The east will become open where 142nd Street connects to Vanessa. All that's going to be upgraded. So east and west, east and west will be done. We'll be going to connect, do a better job of connecting the north. So Villeneuve Road is going to be redone. I don't know if we're going to be starting construction, likely not starting construction on Villeneuve Road. So east, west, and north is going to be redone. And St. Albert Trail north of the hospital, some of you might have come down it. You start to see that construction along the trail. There's probably about two kilometers of, uh, of work that has to be done along the trail. It's a little bit, some people call it a dog's breakfast. There's a lot of work to be done in that area. We've got to urbanize that, and that's a key area. So that takes care of the center of the trail, east, the west, the north, and connecting the, uh, connecting the east to the west with, with the Villeneuve Road. Pedestrian bridges are all going to get a rehab, a facelift this year. We're going to continue our work on physician attraction. Some might uh, question, what's, why do we work on physician attraction? We don't have enough doctors in our community. Uh, you hear that wherever you go in, in rural Alberta, uh, throughout all Alberta, we need to continue to work on physician attraction for our community. The city has purchased a new building, uh, uh, used to be known as the MIG building. It, it's, uh, it's, to the, it's next to Canadian Tire. Uh, some of our RCMP staff, as well as our recreational and family services uh, staff, are going to be moving into that building beginning later on in February. We recently signed our Arts and Heritage Foundation agreement, and that agreement will, be, will become more actionable starting. Uh, we just signed that last week, so that'll really uh, be a key effort in 2013. We're going to move forward on silencing train whistles in our community. If, if possible. Here's one that's extremely important from a regional point of view, and I have to credit Mayor Mandel, Mayor, uh, thank you for being here, and I, I, I do want to, uh, to share this. This is, St. Albert is going to build a park and ride in the city of Edmonton. This is unheard of, that where a municipality is going to build a park and ride, we're going to build a bit major facility in someone else's territory. And this requires the province and the city uh, of Edmonton and the city of St. Albert uh, working together on. We just received a letter yesterday from, uh, from the Minister of Municipal Affairs, uh, or sorry, the Minister of Transportation, giving us a thumbs up on the, uh, on the grant funding that is going to come from the province. The province is going to take about $20 million on that. The City of St. Albert will be about $10 million. It's called the Green Trip funding. So Edmonton, St. Albert, and the province have to do that together because that's actually within the Transportation Utility Corridor. 2013, we're hoping for a school announcement. We won't necessarily hold our breath on this one because of the provincial, some of the provincial budget matters, but we're still have, we still have a belief that we have a school need. Social master plan work is going to continue, and we'll, and we'll wrap up that work in this council term. We're, doing, we're finishing off updating our environmental master plan. The environmental, last time we updated the environmental master plan, it paved the way for the, for the garbage system uh, that, where we had to catch up to, uh, to Spruce Grove and Sherwood Park because they had provided good leadership in the region. Council has approved money for the handy bus, which is our equivalent of DATS. Our, that it's where the, it, so, so those with special transportation needs can go into Edmonton. That's brand new for us. We're going to finally cross the border with our handy bus. Duh, but we're going to do it. Um, we're going to assess the needs for what's called a community support center, growing seniors. We have a growing seniors uh, population. It's not only for seniors, but certainly we have to look at, uh, at what we're going to do for that. The trail system of Aaron Ridge and Oakmont, we have unfinished business. So I listed out a lot of stuff that's going to happen in St. Albert. And for those of you who might be interested in some entertainment, uh, April 2nd, we're actually redoing our animal bylaw, where many people are going to determine or are going to give input to council on whether or not we can have pigs, chickens, dogs, cats, and other goats and other animals within our backyards or within our homes. So yes, we've decided we're going to tackle it. We decided actually to tackle it just before the election. Isn't that one a good one? An animal bylaw, April 2nd, stay tuned. Let me talk about the region. There is a museum of differences in this region. We have big, small, rural, urban, the county of Lamont mayor here, or I mean, sorry, the, uh, the reeve of uh, the county of Lamont. Very, very much a farmland, our farming community. They're a lot different than Wobman a lot different than Edmonton. So we've got all these differences. We are mandated by the province to have a growth plan in place 
to plan for several categories of work. That growth plan is in place, but it's already out of date. It was put in place in 2008, and it's already too old. And to be honest with you, it's broken in some cases. It doesn't, it doesn't work in every aspect. We have some work to do. The region has some work to do. That's why there's 100 people from the region here supporting each other. And they have differences with St. Albert. St. Albert has differences with Edmonton. Edmonton has differences with Lamont County. And the list goes on and on and on. But we have to be at the table. So, the, so we have a five-year plan that is already too, too old. We have to update another five-year plan. that's within the expectation of the provincial government. The second thing happened that this week, we just received uh, support from the provincial government. Uh, and we're along with some money, and I thank you again, uh, Minister Horner, you gave out money before the budget come down. I thought that was very good of you, but it's, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars. The municipalities, 12 municipalities have put money in, as well as the province, to look at a regional transit commission. People may not like that word. It's not quite the word that people want to hear. But should we have a regional transit commission so that, trans, that, that public transit is moved more regionally instead of a little bit of Edmonton, a little bit of St. Albert, a little bit of Leduc, and the list goes on. So 12 municipalities at the table working on that, including many that are in this room. We have so much work to do on planning on borders. All of the borders in the region, that, uh, where, there, where are there interface areas, uh, the one, that is, the, the, the one that is the biggest challenge for St. Albert is the border between St. Albert and Sturgeon County. We have to figure out what that border plan is for the next 100 years, and we're going to have to figure it out in the next couple of years. We can't continue to have a region that's, you know, that has these differences where you can't figure out what the plan is. There has to be a water plan, a sewer plan, a school plan, a recreation plan. A, uh, all those things have to be put in place. We have to have a specialized transit plan for the region. Now, what does that mean? When the province uh, provided a mandate that the tw there's 24 municipalities. When the province provided the mandate, uh, the 24 municipalities would work together on a plan. One area that the province identified in the regulation passed by the legislature is that we must have a specialized transit plan so that somebody on a walker or a wheelchair can get from Leduc to Sturgeon County to St. Albert to Edmonton in some seamless way. Easier said than done. We haven't even tackled it yet. We haven't started on it. Uh, for the most part, uh, uh, it's, work, it's work ahead of us. I must give a lot of credit to Don Iveson and some of the transit people that are, uh, Don, Councillor Don Iveson's here, uh, on the, many of the transit committee, for such tough work in the last couple of years getting to where we are. We have LRT planning ahead of us. The, uh, the question is raised, should, should LRT ever come into St. Albert? Should it ever cross or go under the Anthony Hendy? Or uh, does, it, does it have a place in St. Albert? It uh, might feel like it's uh, 40 or 60 years away, but if you don't plan for 40 years from now, suddenly it's 40 years from now and we're here, right? We have other regional things that have to happen. Affordable housing is to be expected to be more planned on a regional basis. Homelessness would be a good example. St. Albert does not have the homelessness issue that Edmonton has on a per capita basis. But we still have, on any given day, 10, 20, 30, 40 people who are moving from house to house or camping down in the River Valley. We have issues that we have to deal with on a per capita basis. Uh, we, have, we have challenges. We have affordable housing issues. And I have to credit the province and uh, that the cities of Edmonton and Calgary for taking a real strong stand on dealing with, with homelessness. Done a tremendous job over the last number of years, and I believe, or I don't know if it's down about 50% in the last uh, number of years. We have our issues. We have must work on that. Sturgeon Foundation. Many people here who are on the governing body of the Sturgeon Foundation. The Sturgeon Foundation is, is a group that take care of seven uh, whole, seven uh, seniors facilities in the region. That's, do we need to go to eight? Do we need to go to nine? Where, where are we going to grow, where are we gonna grow the, the facilities? Where are we going to put the facilities for our seniors? That's a regional matter. That, that's a very much, re it already is a regional matter today. It's already planned for because of, you know, the, uh, the way that it's structured. We, but we're facing with this growing population of seniors and the need to work on a regional basis. 
or even the housing mix in St. Albert has an influence on, uh, uh, on affordable housing for the region. Ambulance is now regional. And maybe economic development needs to be more regional. The, uh, at this today, economic development is not a regional uh, job by the Cap Region Board. Now let me also say that from a regional point of view, you will hear lots of, oh, something's not right. The, there's, a, there's a fight over here. This isn't working. There's not, something's not working here. That's going to be natural when you're going to have, when you, when you're going to have municipalities who each have responsibilities to their, for, to the, to their residents, and yet there's a difference in, in, in a need. So you're going to hear about those warts, but the province and the minister have uh, minister of municipal affairs have expectations that we solve those issues and we have a responsibility to solve them. So whether it be the chambers of commerce working together as a region, or municipalities working together as a region, or ambulance providers working together as a region, there is no no question that the expectation is clear. And we would expect the same thing of police. We would expect the same thing of police. If there's a crook in, in Edmonton, if there's a crook in Leduc that belongs in St. Albert or arrested by and does crime in, in St. Albert, let's find him or her. And th those, are the, those are the needs that we're faced with. There are more people moving to Edmonton and Calgary than the entire province combined. So, 100,000 100, people moving to the province, I don't even know what it is anymore. But whatever there is <clears throat> moving to the province or growing, some of them uh, are, you know, just more babies being born, whatever that number is, most of it is happening in Edmonton and Calgary. So again, we have to look at some of these things from a regional point of view and say, how are we going to plan for this? Now we have to do all the 2013 stuff while we have an election on the horizon. Silly season, somebody called it. Uh, so we, oh, and by the way, uh, this, starting this fall when the election, uh, when there is a municipal election, uh, that's four-year terms. So the province has chosen to move municipalities from three-year to four-year terms. So all of the stuff that I mentioned uh, is also going to be, um, you know, is also going to be brought forward during a municipal election. At the same time, of course, new issues are going to come forward because that's what candidates do. They bring, they, they, well, they, those new candidates will surface, will surface the issues. So in closing, we will ensure all the base business is done, whether it's the pothole filling or the park maintenance or, or whatever that base business is, making sure we move ahead the social, the, the, the economic, and the environmental agendas. We're going to continue to make sure that those base businesses are, that base businesses move forward. We will ensure that regional and provincial stuff takes its fair share of time at council and, and council's attention. I think that we will need to elect big picture thinkers and we're going to have to, we're going to, have to bring people to the table both uh, administratively uh, and within the community that are prepared to work on bigger pictures than just St. Albert stuff. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank each of you for being here. I, I, again, I want to thank uh, the Chamber for providing this opportunity because it's an important opportunity for the message to be communicated. And secondly, I want to thank each of the business, uh, the business owners, the business uh, people in the community for what you do to build our community. I'd like to thank the regional folks that are here again. Uh, thank you for coming here and showing your support for St. Albert. And finally, to my council colleagues, Thank you immensely. You have served the last three years with grace, with dignity, with dignity, and with a tremendous amount of work ethic. And I thank you for all the hours that you put in for our community. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, give all your counselors a hand.